So what's the next newest so, fossil that we have? Well, not the next newest one, but the youngest one on the line here uh, would be Homo erectus, and this is K and M E R three seven three three. And at Homo erectus, now you're getting something that looks distinctly more human-like. Uh, if you look at the skull, the brain is bigger, distinctly than the chimpanzee. And how old is this? The early ones. Homo erectus. Now we're dealing with things that are under um, under two million years, uh, in the 1.8 to uh, uh, going up to about a half a million years ago, or maybe 0.8 million years ago. And do they use tools as well? Classified. Absolutely, they use tools. They have distinctive tool industries that are associated with them. The actual land industry in Africa is very. Did we find a, a tool factory. Is this the one uh, we find right? sites where it's they manufacture the tools. You can actually take the tools and put together the flakes and reconstruct them and reconstruct exactly how they made the tools. We find butcher sites where the animals, where they have cut marks on the animals, the tools lying right in amongst the bones. We have cook, uh, well, fire's found later, but at the very latest end of the spectrum, um, about 0.8 million years ago, there's fire that shows up. But, um, but you know it's not this, a homo sapiens. You know this thing's not a homo sapiens. It's looking more like a homo sapiens, but if you hold the skull up, first of all, compare it again to the chimpanzee, you'll see that the face now is pulled back considerably. The brain, though, is considerably bigger, and the tooth row now has become short and more parabolic like a modern human. But if you look at a modern human, you'll see that the forehead is almost absent on this thing. The forehead slopes backward. The mm -hmm. brain is distinctly smaller. Uh, these things have a brain size of half to two-thirds that of modern humans on average. It has these enormous brow ridges up in the front. The head is pinched back here in the back. The face is flat, but it still sticks out by comparison to a modern human. If you look at the face of this thing, it's actually quite large by comparison so to the say, face of this one. I was going to say maybe it could just be a child, but no, it's not it's a got child. A huge actually, this has uh, got heavily worn teeth. <laughs> that are adult teeth. It's just uh, this is an adult. We have many of these specimens, and they all show the same characteristics. Um, the foramen and magnum here is moved up underneath the head. It's bipedal, walking on two legs, just like modern humans. And in fact, we have a skeleton of one of these things, the Mary Tommy Boy uh, skeleton. And with that skeleton, we're able to demonstrate conclusively that this thing is bipedal and the skeleton is effectively modern. Uh, there are a few small differences in the skeleton, um, which a detailed class would go over. But for all intents and purposes, it's a modern human skeleton. But the skull is distinctly not modern. Now, some creationists will say that if you put this thing in a hat, and a coat and tie, and put it on a subway in New York, that nobody would notice. And I think if you uh, reconstructed this thing and put it in a coat and tie and a hat, everybody would notice on the subway. It's going to have at least some of a protruding It jaw. would have a protruding muzzle. Its face would look unusually large. Uh, the baseball cap test is what I like to say. The baseball cap would not fit comfortably on the forehead. It really wouldn't have One size does not fit. <laughs> One size would not fit. It would just blow off at the first breeze here because there really isn't much of a forehead here at all. Um, so that's Homo erectus. These things uh, change transitionally over time. We have lots of specimens, and they actually alter their form over time, get bigger and bigger and bigger, until you get a transitional form called Homo heidelbergensis, and then Homo heidelbergensis transitions into two separate species that lived at the same time, one being the Neanderthals and one being modern Homo. Uh, this is a Neanderthal skull, and this is a modern Homo skull. People think that Neanderthals were ancestral to humans. They were not ancestral to modern humans. They were a separate uh, species. Uh, if you look at them, it's got an enormous brain. And the brain of a Neanderthal is actually bigger than that of a modern human on average. But the forehead is low and sloping like these guys over here. And the face is enormous by comparison to a modern human. It's still pulled back like Homo erectus, but it's large in size. It has huge brow ridges, which is a retention of these earlier guys over here in this football-shaped skull. The skeleton of these things is very robust and heavy. They were short, squat, really strong, really powerful. They had enormous noses up in the front, these huge, thick brow ridges. And um, they don't occur together with Homo sapiens. And in fact, they evolve uh, after modern Homo shows up in the fossil record. And they're limited to Europe uh, and uh, Eastern Europe up to the um, um, Ukraine area right? and Western Russia. And modern Homo, of course, has the very large brain case that we all think about, the rounded brain case. It has the high sloping forehead. It has a small face which is tucked up underneath of the brain. What which really happened here is that the face, as we've seen in these guys, has shortened and pulled up underneath. You develop the parabolic tooth arch here as the palate gets smaller and smaller and smaller. 
but the brain is also increased in these guys and moved up and forward. Um, why that is, we're not exactly sure. Uh, it is associated with expansion of the forebrain, and it's thought that cognitively modern homo is we're smarter than these other guys. We probably thought differently than these guys. One of the things that interestingly shows up in association with the expansion of the brain size is art. Uh, when modern homo appears, we start seeing art plastered all over everything. Is that uh, the why tree. we start classifying them as yeah, homo sapiens? we classify them as homo sapiens based on the anatomy. Um, but there are some people who go so far as to classify uh, the homo sapiens as anatomical modern homo sapiens and cognitive homo sapiens, that is the ones that show all the artistic um, the sophistication, the tool sophistication that we see in modern homo. And these things, once they evolve and spread out of Africa, um, they spread rapidly uh, all over the world, and the toolkits and technology begins evolving very, very rapidly and becomes extremely sophisticated to the point where you, know, you really need considerable training and experience to be able to construct these tools. Uh, don't we have evidence of some of the culture of Neanderthals, like that yes, they were buried with dyes and things like that? Uh, actually, they were not. Uh, the original Neanderthal burial that was found, it was thought that flowers were thrown in the grave because there was a lot of pollen that was found in it in the initial analysis. Uh, the initial analysis was not as careful as they've done now, though. And reanalysis of that suggests that um, uh, the pollen, it was just buried in the spring. And uh, unlike with modern homo graves, where you find grave goods, jewelry, bracelets, things that are very, very obviously laid in the grave, and things that, mean things, to them. things that clearly mean things that were created by these individuals, these guys, the best you can say is they did bury the dead and they buried them in a fetal position. Uh, but burying somebody in a fetal position doesn't really mean that uh, you're either religious or burying afterlife goods with these things. What it means is that you're digging the smallest hole possible and creating the body. <laughs> so. Uh, the positions, the you know, certainly burying the body is significant. They're smart. You know, yeah. they're doing these, there's no question that they're smart, but they didn't have the same culture that we have. They're very sophisticated, though. There's no question about that. But uh, they're different than modern humans. Now, one of the things uh, that we talk about is bipedalism here, and it's interesting. I'm just looking at the skulls here. You know, the progressive increase and change over time, and this is not just a uh, a series of, of uh, anatomical changes, but this is also temporal. This is what we see going through time from one species sequentially to the other. And you can see the transition here is gradual and oh. rather dramatic. It's very cool. Why don't we take a break before we move on to bipedalism? Because okay. I think we've 